my name is Barbie and I am with Jeannie's Designs and I'm getting ready to do the uh, Apothecary pattern by Sincerely Jan. And I'm gonna do the small, I'm gonna do the small one. The large one is, uh, it's really not huge, but I, I just decided to do the small one. It's a handbag size and it's plenty big. So that's what I'm gonna do, the um, Apothecary Handbag by Sincerely Jen. Now I have made a lot of these and I'll grab one um, when I come back. So I did buy the templates. So the, uh, and I think I got them from the template shop, I think is the name of it. I'll link it below in the description of the video. It doesn't say on here where it's from, but I'm pretty sure I did. Anyway, this is the outside fabric, or I'm sorry, this is the lining fabric. So it tells you right on here what you need. I'm not sure you can see that, but it tells you right there. So I have two lining pieces. I have, and I'm using this really cotton quilting uh, parakeet and flamingo. <laughs> it's so cute. All my quilting cotton pieces I have lined with woven fuse. So the lining, this is, these are two zipper pockets that I've lined in Woven Fuse. This is, it has a top zipper closure and this is uh, the top zipper closure pieces. There's four of them uh, lined with Woven Fuse. And then on the front, it's kind of actually hard to explain. Let me start with this piece. So this piece tells you, you have uh, one exterior and two lining this size. So I have those right here and I'm using that uh, obviously uh, cotton and then I'm using pink vinyl. The vinyl doesn't have any interfacing at all. So I've got two, three of those. And then if you go up one line, it says you need two lining period. And I have two of those. Let me find them. Yep, I have two of those woven in woven interfacing. And then for the entire piece, you have one exterior, no interfacing, and two lining. Woven shoes on the lining. Okay, so that's that. It's a I, I love the templates. I think they help dramatically. Um, and then for the base, this is a round base. So I have one piece of the vinyl, and then I have one piece of the cotton quilting with woven fuse. And then I did put uh, Decaville White outside of the seam allowance. And she gives you, you get two, this is for the base and the interior lining, and then you get one for the stabilizer. Again, I love that. And then there are, you need, there are side flaps. So this is the side flap and you need four of those and there are four exterior. So I have, and they are mirrored pieces. So be sure you pay attention to that. So I have, uh, I have four mirrored. I made sure that when I cut them, I cut four and no interfacing on those. And then you have, uh, I'm doing a crossbody. So that's four inches. I'm doing one inch hardware today. So that's, uh, it's the width of the vinyl, which is about 54, I think, by four inches. So that's that. And then there are two top handles. And I've got two of those in the vinyl, no interfacing. Those are four inches as well. And then you have uh, four connectors for the handles. Um, and so I've got enough vinyl for four of those. And then I've got a piece for the uh, crossbody connectors as well, all out of vinyl, no interfacing. So then you have uh, the contrast. What did I do with the pattern? Let me show you here. So, you know, you can do this front any way you choose to. She has the three matching there. 
I'm gonna mix it up because my bottom here is gonna be the pink vinyl. And the top is gonna be the Flamingo Parakeet fabric. So I have one of these and two of these. And I have put woven interfacing on those and Decaville Light because they're gonna be on the outside. And then you have two top pieces uh, on the outside and two top pieces on the inside. So these two, you can hardly see, but it's separated right there. So you have two outside and you have two inside. And I'm doing those all out of vinyl. I did go ahead and cut it. The pattern calls for two Decaville lights uh, on two of the pieces. I'm not sure I'm going to need those with this vinyl, but I cut them out just in case I need them. And then again, uh, I have the templates for, for those. It's fantastic. I have a template for the long one. I don't know what I did with it. I think it fell on the floor out there. So that's what we have so far. Um, again, Sincerely Jen Apothecary. Very easy, actually easy bag to make. The one challenge is the round on the bottom piece, but I staple that and I'll show you when I put it together and it makes it so much easier. It's, it's really easy. And then I do have a piece for the zipper facing, I mean the zipper ends. And she also gives you a piece for all the extra pieces that you need that aren't in, uh, don't have a pattern piece or a template. So very handy. Okay. All right, let me go grab one and I'll show it to you and we'll get started. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click the JD in the bottom right corner and um, subscribe and like and feel free and comment. Thanks, bye-bye. Or I'll be right back. Okay. I forgot to go over the hardware, but I'm going to use this zipper tape. It is just so cute with this. Uh, it'll be perfect because you see the zippers on the front, so I think it's kind of fun. And then I'm going to use, at least my plan, is to use these little seahorses for the front zippers and the interior. And then I'm just going to use a really large, I don't know what these call these, um, ladder or whatever for the top zipper. So I'm going to use those. Two D-rings for the side uh, adjustable uh, strap connector. Uh, two swivel clasps for that. that. Four uh, square rings for the handles, the top handles. And then one adjustable uh, strap connector for that, for the uh, crossbody strap. So that's that. And then I was going to show you one that I've already made. And this is out of all vinyl. This is vinyl. The side is vinyl. Um, so you have your two zipper pockets in front. I forget what I used for the lining. Oh, I used waterproof canvas for the lining. Pink waterproof canvas. So two zippers on front, which is fantastic. And I did use the same fabric on this and for the top. I'm going to change it up just a little bit this time. And then for the back, you have that, uh, you have a nice slip pocket that I use that for my phone when I carry this. Then you have two handles, two good size handles, uh, which are just connected with a rivet. And then for the handle, I did webbing on this one. Again, you know, an adjustable strap crossbody. And then on the inside, all I did was an inside zipper pocket with an overlay. And I forgot I need to get an overlay because I will do an overlay for this one as well. But then the top closes with a, a zipper as well. It's hard to see it. Let me. And uh, it does call for a zipper end, so I will use one of those for that. But uh, it's, I mean, if you see there's the uh, round curves that we're gonna do, this one actually came out really well. Um, and it's not that hard. If you, honestly, curves, if you just go slow, and I am gonna use a stapler, I imagine that I will. I mean, you know, I don't ever say for sure until I get to that point, but I'll probably use a stapler for those round curves. So that's what we're gonna do. 
And I'm gonna uh, get started and I'm gonna fast forward this because it's nothing new. The strap, I uh, put a line down the middle, it's four inches. I'm gonna fold it towards the line, leaving about an eighth inch in the middle. Then I'll fold it over and I'll sew that down. And then I'll attach the swivel, I mean the uh, strap adjuster and the swivel clasp on this. The uh, handle connectors on the, with, for the D-rings, I'll go ahead, I just, two inch piece, uh, line down the middle, and I'll, that has raw ends on the inside, so you make sure you use the raw ends on the inside of the strap. And then the four handle connectors, again, I don't know why I have two pieces, but I already cut one. Um, same principle there. The two handles, I have four inch divided down the middle, and I'll be uh, doing those just exactly like the handles. So I'll do all that at a fast forward. And then starting the bag, let me just uh, make sure I get the names of these pattern pieces right for you. So the exterior back panel, the exterior back panel pocket is attached to one of the lining uh, exterior back panels. And I have both of them attached there. All right, and we're gonna sew those together, right sides together, and then we'll turn it over and top stitch. So we'll do that. And then we will take uh, one of the lining back panels, one of these, I don't know why I left those clipped together, that's weird. One of the lining back panels, and we will attach uh, one of the top C's, which I had Decaville on, and we'll sew that and then turn those in top stitch as well. Okay? I may stop and do those with you just because I don't want anybody getting confused because there are, there's quite a few pieces to this. All right, so I'll stop and I'll fast forward all of this and I'll change my camera angle. All right, see you in a minute. All right, so just to recap of what I've done, these are the two handles. Um, they will be attached to these four uh, square rings once I get them on the back. And just keep in mind, these are really tiny, uh, but they work. Trust me, they do really work. Uh, I think one time I made them bigger and you just really don't need to make them bigger because as uh, in the pattern, they work perfectly. I'm just gonna get some of that stuff off of there. All right, and then I have the two handle connectors, the crossbody connectors, and all I did was fold them into each other. And then I just prepped to put another piece of double-sided tape to put them on the bag once I get ready and they'll stay in place. So then I have my handle, my crossbody strap, I should say. Um, and I did put two rivets in there. I haven't uh, yet pressed those, but I'll go do that. And then I'll get ready and we'll start making the rest of the bag. See you in a minute. All right, so we have the back pocket panel. I mean, yeah, the back pocket out of vinyl, the back panel, and one of the back pocket panel linings. So we're going to sew those together, and I believe her seam allowance is, yeah. And I don't think I said this, but I'm using a hot pink text 45. I think I 
got from Saya Swag Bags. I just love her thread. She runs out of it all the time because it's so popular. All right, so let's flip that over. And then we're going to top stitch that. So what we're ended up doing here is we're making that back panel slip pocket. If you have material you can iron, I would certainly do that. Okay, so there you have that. I'm just going to top stitch that. Oh my gosh, and there you go. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to take uh, the uh, another piece of the back pocket lining and one of the C pieces. And so that together, again, at the same seam allowance. sewing these pieces together just make sure that you have them going the right way all right now and we're also going to uh, let's see what she says as far as top stitching yeah you want the seam allowance going up towards that C piece and then you're gonna top stitch on the C piece Mine, I have decorative light in this C piece, so it's uh, it's saying I don't want to do that. Okay, and then we are going to put these two together, just like this. And get them as lined up as you can. It's not probably going to be perfect. And that's okay. This pattern has a, a pretty good seam allowance, so you should be okay. Okay, so that's what you should have, and we're gonna stitch around those. But first, interestingly, let me move this up. She has you finish the pocket. So turn it over, and you want to finish that pocket. And I think she tells you about a three quarter seam allowance. Three quarter seam allowance. You can you can cut that excess off, which I will do. You just don't want it in the bottom seam allowance. I think that's what she's uh, wanting to do. So there you go. So that's what you should have now. We are gonna baste the sides together. Just eight minutes. And you might have some hangover and that's absolutely okay. And so I will just, uh, I'm going to trim that up. So you can see I have a little bit of a hangover here. Not literally. <laughs> Perfect. 
All right, so that is your back pocket. Cute, 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 okay. All right, let me see what she has us doing next. Oh yeah, we're gonna put the side wings on, so you need two of these pieces. And let's see, so this one, will go here, the one like that has the little end there goes on top here. Right sides together. And I'll show you how they match up here in a second. Same on this other side. And then this just Pay attention to the seam allowance for this because it's different than we've done yet so far. So that should match like that there and then the bottom should match right there. Okay, and so do your stitch those together. other side then we will be uh, turning those over and top stitching and then I think this back panel is done again I haven't made one of these in a while so there that's what you should have all right, and your seam allowance should be going to the outside and then just top stitch your eighth inch seam allowance. Oh, I can get my needle up. Top stitching, so check your bobbin. Same thing on this side. I started with a, a full bobbin, so I should be good. slightly. Same here. That's it. Okay. So that's what you should have and that's your back slip pocket. But look how big that bag is. I mean it's really plenty big. All right set that aside for now. And now we want to grab the exterior pocket panel A. zippers so I'm ready for some zippers let me get my zippers ready and I'll be right back okay so we have our um, exterior pocket panel a pocket a I wrote everything on the back and we are gonna do a I she tells you the length of the zipper but I always make my zippers longer than necessary so um, 
your panel, outside panel is right side up. The zipper is right side down. And we are just gonna baste that in place. And then we are gonna take one of our interior lining pieces, A, and sandwich that together right on top. And then we are going to sew that uh, together at a uh, interesting seam allowance. So just keep that in mind. And if you have a zipper foot, I would highly recommend you use it for this bag. Okay, then we're going to flip that over and we are going to top stitch right along that bottom. Right there. Oh, I'll show you my. Uh, cute little zipper poles here in a second. I'm using, um, I think, I'm trying to think. I got the zipper tape from Zorrell. And I think I got the zipper, um, little seahorse zipper poles, I think from Zorrell as well. I wish I could remember for sure. I'll have to look. All right, so that, and before I go any further, I am gonna put my label right there while I can still uh, put it on there. And I'm gonna use a hot paint label. And let's see. You, I would just pull, if you're gonna put yours here at the same place, I would just pull your lining out of the way. You can put the label almost anywhere on this bag. Let me see. Put it there. Let me see if that looks pretty even. Yeah, it does. All right, so I you don't need to watch me do that. So I will uh, either fast forward or do that offline, and then get everything else ready for the next step. Okay, I put my logo there. Isn't that hot pink just so cute? Okay, so now take your. Um, pocket panel B, which is one of these pieces, and I am going to try my best to center this. I didn't. 
And what you want is you just want, when you turn it up, it to be even on the side. So you might have to play with that a little bit. Center marks really, if you centered your zipper, you could do it. But I didn't center my zipper. I wanted overhang. So that's okay. So we're gonna baste this in place because we still have to add the uh, lining. Oh, I gotta turn my stitch back up to full. Okay, and now, Take that remaining last lining pocket A, A, and right sides together back here. Huh. Mm, again, I did not center. I think next time, I forget if I did this. I think I, I again, I should have written notes because I, if I remember correctly now, I, I was thinking, I need to make sure that I center things because I don't think I did it last time either. Okay, so the remaining pocket A is right sides together with your other pocket piece. And then I'm gonna sew it from this side just so I can make sure that I'm going just on the other side of that other basting stitch that I did. And she actually tells you to do uh, a bigger seam around. So I'm gonna do the biggest I can. And now you are going to fold that up and you want the seam that you just created going up towards this pocket piece, this uh, panel B. Okay, and it, mine has, um, again, mine has Decaville on it and it's not wanting to do it, but it will. Jen has really good uh, pattern instructions as well. A lot of these designers uh, really have good instructions. Some don't. I've come across some that don't. All right, so that's what you have so far. I've got my little penguin right in the, or flamingo. It's not a penguin. A flamingo right in there. Hmm, so cute. All right. Okay, lay this right side up. Now we want our uh, our second zipper. Our second zipper, and we are going to lay that right sides down on that top panel B, which is this piece. Right side down, your zipper pull to the left, just like the other one. I'm gonna pull my pull off of there. And we are just gonna base that in place again. Almost have the front done too. Okay. 
too. All right, so now this is what you should have. Place a pocket panel lining B. Let me see. Where am I? Okay, so my pocket panel lining B. Right on top of there. Actually, I take that back. This is right side up, and we want to place it right against. No, hold on a second. Right side up, place the. Oh, I already did that step. I was confusing myself. Yeah, yeah. That was right. Okay, place it right here on top right sides together. And then, uh, yeah, you need full seam allowance here. Now we are going to flip that over. Yep, and so this is what you should have, and we're going to top stitch along that bottom of that second zipper. Sure your pieces are good. The zipper tape. I think I got this zipper tape at Morel too. I'll look and I'll put the put it in the description, but I'm pretty sure I did. Okay, so that's what you should have. Now we want to take the remaining, uh, let's see. Uh, we want to take the C piece and we're gonna add that up here. Again, play with it a little bit to make sure that when you turn it up, I'm gonna, I'll do that, that it's even with the sides. I think this is going to be. So yeah, perfect. And my little um, flamingo is looking good. Okay, and just base that in place. It'd be perfect if I had some flamingo uh, or parakeet zipper poles, but I don't. I don't. Okay, and now. Uh, 
that, so I'm back here. We want to put our remaining pocket panel on the back. Put that together. I forgot how cute this is. All right, so this is a little off up here. And now you're gonna sew this together. And I'm gonna sew it from the front so I can see my previous stitching and just make sure I'm on the, uh, I'm on the outside of that stitching. So that's what you should have. Oh my gosh, they're almost even. I didn't plan that and I didn't intend to. Okay, so now again, we want to press that <clears throat> seam allowance going up and top stitch. So this is what you should have. So you have this pocket. Just getting caught there. Again. There we go. And this pocket. So just check to make sure that you haven't closed anything by in mistake. Perfect. And I'm going to push, keep those in the middle. Okay, because I think we're going to baste all that in place now. Oh no, we're going to uh, do the, um, close off the pockets. Okay. Um... So these, uh, it, you, here, here's, a, here's something to keep in mind. She tells you to clip these and then fold this outside piece up and away. And then we're going to stitch these together. And you really just want to make sure that you're catching all four of those lining pockets. So uh, I just do a pretty good uh, seam allowance. And then I'll cut off the excess. And all four of those lining pieces are sticking together on the bottom. And when you get done with that, just double check that you caught all four pieces. Yep, and then trim that up. Beautiful. Okay. Make sure you're not cutting your front piece. And now, I believe, we are going to base those together. Yeah. So, make sure your zipper pulls are in the middle. And we're just going to baste all of that together. One eighth, six, one eighth inch. Long. And the same on this side. And you'll have excess, so we'll trim all that up. Okay. 
All right, trim all that up, cut off any excess uh, fabric, pocket, zipper. The next step is we're gonna add those side pieces just like we did on the back. You should see the floor in my sewing room. I need to do some vacuuming. Burn the end of your zippers. And if you have any little extra thread, I trim those off now. You have a pretty good seam allowance, but you don't want them getting caught in the seam allowance. All right. There, there you should have it. So now we have this top zipper, which is big. And we have this zipper pocket, which is also large. And that's what you should have on the back. Beautiful. All right, let's take these two pieces. And we're gonna do the same thing. So I would also put your zipper pulls in the middle and attach those. And again, the seam allowance is a little different than we've been doing. It's the same as we did on the back panel though. I think my husband has a lightning game on out there. I gotta go find out. I didn't think they played today. All right, so same on this side. And stitch those and then we're going to turn those and top stitch just like we did so this is exactly what we did the back okay okay so stitch those on both sides, then turn them over with the seam allowance going towards the outside and top stitch. And then that front panel is done. Beautiful, okay. Okay, so we have the back, the front and the back assembled. And all I did was add those square ring strap handle connectors. And they're just attached and basted in place right at the edge of each of those top pieces. So in the exact same spot, just basted in place. So now we are gonna put these two together. And so I believe we just sew along the sides. Again, we have a really good seam allowance. So it's uh, pretty forgiving. Yep, yeah, just sew along each side at the seam allowance in the pattern, and then we'll trim that seam allowance down.
Now, interestingly, she has you trim that seam allowance pretty significantly. I'm not sure I'm going to trim it that much, but I'll trim it. this bottom it's just off ever so slightly okay and now you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna go over those seams one more time just on the south side of them This is a, a pretty um, durable or heavyweight, not heavyweight really, probably medium weight vinyl. But uh, when I looked at it, I could see the um, threads. Oh, goodness. And I just given it a little extra. Some people say if you uh, use a, a smaller stitch length, that helps. And sometimes I have tried that. I don't know that that really helps. It could. All right, so let's turn this right side out. And we're going to add our um, uh, crossbody strap connectors now. And we're going to add those. You can add them wherever you'd like, really. Um, oh, I remember what I did now. Let me look at this one. Yeah, I added them in the top seam, not, I didn't do it this way. So let me get rid of this piece of tape here. Oh, I knew when I was putting this together, I thought, man, I don't think I did this last time. The pattern calls for you to put it right there. On your, on your uh, side seams. And you could certainly do that. I am not going to do that. I am going to put it so it's coming out my top seam. Yeah. And if you're doing this on a, in on a um, domestic, you may want to do that. Because uh, adding it to this top seam might be too bulky for you. Yeah, I'm so glad I remembered that. Let me see if I can get this. Uh, you know, there it is. I was hoping I could get that just to come right off. This is really good. <laughs> double sided tape. I think this is my sale right double sided tape. Okay, and now I'm just going to base these in place. So they don't move around on me. It does. So keep this in mind. It does add some bulk to your side seams here. So if you don't want that, put them on the uh, side down lower where it's not going to be in your seam allowance. Beautiful. 
you know, again, I've got to write myself some notes about this. <laughs> This uh, um, foot doesn't like going over uh, things that aren't consistent. All right, let's try this again. Now we are ready to put the bottom on. All right, so that's what you have so far. The front and the sides with your connector or if you put your connector down here and the back on the other side. Okay. Now I'm gonna grab my um, outside bottom. And find your centers on this. And I would find all four centers. So I found centers on the sides and on the long edge as well. Okay. So let's, yeah. Oh, I didn't, I gotta mark my bag. I gotta mark these centers. Oh, I didn't do it. I should have. All right, let me do this. I'm gonna just mark it with a ruler. Let me see. So mark your centers on the bottom here because you'll need that. I should have already done that. So go ahead and do that. And then I'll, I'll clip this together and I'll staple it. And uh, we'll come back and do that sewing together. Okay, so I, I will say that I probably didn't need to staple this, but this vinyl is a little bit slippery. Uh, the bottom fit in there perfectly. I didn't even have to snip anything, but I, I just felt like it was a little slippery, so I went ahead and stapled it. So let's just sew it up and see how we do. Let's start over here on the side. And you have a very nice seam allowance, I think. Yep, all right. tell people if you end up with a little pucker it is not the end of the world you know would you like to not have them sure just be sure you know if you're using staples just be sure you're not going to go over them with your machine needle 
And it does help to reach in there and kind of flatten things out as you go. And go slow. But I'm telling you, I don't know if it's this vinyl or the fact that I stapled it, but I think this might be the easiest one I've done. <laughs> Yeah, I put the Peltex or the uh, Decadal Light on the lining instead of this outer piece, so that could be part of it. Okay, again, reach in there. And even though I stapled it, I did leave some clips on. Remember, the number of staples you put in is the number you have to take out. Huh. Keep that in mind. staples out. I don't know how many I used. Not that many. Maybe 15 staples, which includes both sides. I don't think I did. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, maybe more than that. Six, seven, maybe 20. That's really not too bad. I'm telling you, it may, it makes a difference. Now, some people use double-sided tape to achieve the same thing. Okay, got all those out. Um, I don't think double-sided tape holds as well as the staples and and again you don't need any kind of a fancy stapler any household stapler as long as you can get it in there works i um i used a really tiny one for a very long time and then it just died so i did buy a new one but it's on my amazon i have an amazon 
um, buying list. I'll add that to the description. I think it's on that list. I mean, the extra time to take these out is well worth it. It is to me. You, you may find that it's not worth it for you. Okay, I think I got them all. I probably used about 20. Now I am gonna cut that, uh, see well how it's down, trim it down a little. I did put two rows of stitches, which really makes a difference, I think. And we're ready to do the lining, and we're just doing a um, zipper pocket in the inside lining, so. And that's a zipper overlay, so that'll be pretty fast. Is anybody else kind of obsessive about their work area being clean? I am. That'd be crazy. All right, let's turn this out and see how we did. See how many puckers we got. I'm hoping we have none. That's my goal, but you never know. Oh my gosh, that is actually perfect. That side's good. Oh my gosh, you guys. That is perfect. Look at that. No pucker. It's beautiful. I love it. Uh, this, this vinyl is very pliable. It's really nice vinyl. Okay. Let's see. I gotta fix my pattern. It's, I got duplicate pages in here. It's driving me crazy. Alright, so we'll set that aside for the moment. And we need to grab uh, our, one of our lining pieces. And our zipper pocket pieces. All right, I need to clean this up. I need to go get an overlay. And uh, my pieces have all kinds of interfacing hanging off. So let me do that and I'll be back with my zipper overlay. <clears throat> we'll add the zipper pocket. And then we'll put the lining bottom on. And then we'll put these uh, the lining together with the outside. Huh. Uh, again, this is a um, sincerely Jen pattern. I'm telling you, Jen, you do a fabulous job. This is a, I know this is a very popular pattern, and there's a reason for that because it's so well written and it's uh, cute and it uh, is easy to put together. So thank you, Jen. She did give me the okay, by the way, to do her patterns. Obviously, just like any designer, she wants you to give her credit, which absolutely is a must when you do something like this. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up and I'll get my uh, everything ready and I'll be back. So I finished my pocket and I did do the overlay. Uh, it's uh, I've done a million of these, and so just make sure that you leave your uh, pocket, uh, your zipper pocket lining open, because we'll finish the bottom through that pocket. Um, and I just did an overlay, so finish that. And now I'm going to do my zipper, my top zipper. So I've got four pieces just like this. And I've just used a piece of double-sided tape and folded each end over by half an inch. So I've got four equal pieces. 
And now I'm going to fold my zipper and do the butler method. So I'm gonna have uh, 90 degree turns here on each side. And then, well, let me just do this and then I'll show you. kind of tedious way to do a zipper, but it really does make a difference, I think. Oh my gosh, my top came off my uh, pen. <laughs> That's funny. Because, you know, it's tiny little seams, all the cutting of your threads. It's a, it's kind of a pain, but I really, I do like it, so it's worth it to me. All right, now I'm just going to cut off my excess zipper and burn those ends. So there you have your uh, zipper end. All right. I'm going to put a clip on this end just so I don't lose it. All right. So now we're going to be, I'll do one side with you and then uh, we'll um, do the other one at fast forward. So take your zipper, wrong side up. Your line or your zipper uh, facing is wrong, is right side up. And we're just going to lay that. I'm going to unzip my zipper so you can see right at the ends there. And we're going to clip that and then stitch it just a basting stitch all the way down. Do you ever have mornings where you're like, you feel clumsy? I mean, it's like every clip I touch goes snap and goes somewhere. All right, let's base that in place. <clears throat> I'm just going to zip my zipper back up <clears throat> and grab another piece. They're all sticking together. And I'm going to put that right side down with my other piece of fabric. So it's right side to the wrong side of the zipper. I'll show you here. And just make sure that your ends meet. And that's why I use double-sided tape, because if it doesn't quite meet, I can undo the um, tape and make it suggestible. So there you have it. So that's the right side of the other piece I just basted in place, the wrong side of the zipper, and the right side of this fabric. All right, and now put that on with your full seam allowance. presser foot down on my finger. I think that's the first time I've ever done that, and that was not so good. So I don't want to do that again. That was so good. 
Good, good, good. Orb. Okay. So now put the wrong side of your fabrics together and we're going to top stitch and base the raw edge together. I do like this kind of zipper for a closure of a bag. Okay, so that's what you have. So now we're just gonna top stitch all the way along that and close this raw edge. And again, it's probably gonna be easier if I remove my zipper pull. walking foot, like a zipper walking foot. So there you have it. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the zipper. So right side of your fabric down to the right side of your zipper. Make sure that your ends are meeting on both ends. And then you can unzip it so you can see what you're doing. But just make sure they're meeting. You could definitely use some double-sided tape here rather than baste and uh, do all that. Okay, so sew here, and then I'm gonna sandwich my other zipper uh, tab piece of fabric right side together with the right side of that other fabric. It's actually on the wrong side of the zipper. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward that. Okay, so there's our uh, zipper, top zipper closure. With the cotton quilting, it always looks a little rough because it's got fraying. I probably should have done some pinking, but I didn't. So now take your uh, lining piece that has your zipper pocket Make sure you have your centers on the top and the bottom. I centered my zipper, and we're going to put that right sides up on top. I know it feels weird, but trust me, it works really good. Right side up. Okay, so the right side of our zipper lining up, right side of our zipper up. And we're just going to base that in place. Okay. 
And now take your other, oh my goodness, I gotta fix this pattern, it's weird. Take one of your, oops, sorry, I'm hitting the camera. Uh, so we have four of these pieces and I am not going to use the Decobel. So I'm gonna take one of my, uh, and I forget what they call this, let's see. A top panel, that's what they call it, a top panel. Man, I probably shouldn't have used such a big zipper pull. It's really in the way. Okay. All right. So we want to clip that in place along the top. And then we're going to sew that at the full seam allowance, which is, again, pretty good seam allowance. You know, before I do that, pull the bun. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna mark all my centers. So I would go ahead and do that if I were you on all these pieces. It'll just make when you finish the bag so much easier. Okay. And on these pieces, there is a slight very slight slant. You want the smaller end on the bottom and you want the longer end where we're clipping. It's very, uh, very slight. Okay, and then sew that at your seam allowance. Probably gonna have to check my uh, bobbin here shortly. And then you are gonna fold that up and you want the seam allowance. Let me make sure. Yeah, the seam allowance goes towards this top piece and then we're gonna just top stitch. Hold, I gotta, I gotta check my bobbin. Oh my goodness, I wouldn't have made it. Very bad. Okay, let me change my bobbin. I have another one ready to go. You know, I wish there, I really do wish there was a way to make an endless bobbin. Somebody needs to come up with that. Like have a spool of thread on, on the bottom for your bobbin, as well as uh, the top thread. That way, you wouldn't have to worry all the time about your bobbin thread. Oh, just me. All right, so again, your seam is going towards the top, and we're just going to top stitch that. on one side and I'll just uh... <clears throat> clip that off. <clears throat> All right, so that's what you should have. <laughs> oh, I really like that. I really do. All right, so we're going to do 
the exact same thing on the other side. So take your other lining piece and keep, and make sure you have all your centers marked. And grab one of those other pieces now that I threw them all on the floor. Center all your... You know, it's interesting because some bags, it really doesn't matter if you center, but I'd say most of them it does. Most of them it does. All right, so there's the top. And we're going to take this top piece and put that centered on our other lining piece. Oh, i got to find my center there. Yeah. And clip that in place and baste it. I'll show you. It's hard to see this, I think, for you guys. Bobbin. I kept picking up my bobbin for a clip. All right, so there, here's my other lining piece. And I have put the right side of my zipper up and the right side of my lining is up, okay? And I'm just gonna base that in place. And then we'll add that top panel. Again, you have a pretty generous seam allowance here. I really like that, personally. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to add this other top panel. And again, your narrower end is on the bottom of this. The longer end we're attaching. I hope that makes sense. If it makes any, if it helps at all, that the top of the bag is a little narrower, so the narrow piece is on the bottom. All right, then we'll sew this at our full seam allowance. And then we'll turn that in top stitch. Big old zipper ball. Right. Okay, so that's what you should have. Now I'm going to just uh, fold that over, and again, we're going to top stitch that seam to the top panel. Okay, so that's what you should have. So the back of your bag has your zipper pocket and the zipper pull for the closure of the bag is on the left. Opens to the right, oh, closes to the left. So that's what you should have. Isn't that so cool? I love it. Okay. <coughs> now we are going to um, close our sides <clears throat> and just match up those top panels. So we're gonna repeat how we just, how we finish that front extra here. So we're going to sew down the sides at the seam allowance and then we're going to add our bottom.
make sure your zipper, top zipper, is out of the way. We'll add a zipper in, or we you could add a um, a piece of leather or our vinyl for your zipper end. I'm just going to use one of those metal zipper ends. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna pull that zipper to the middle a little. It's kind of funny how people get in the, um, the habit of liking certain types of zipper pulls. And I think we increase the seam allowance. Yes, we do. Okay. So be sure you increase the seam allowance as you go down. Start the, at the top the same seam allowance, but as you go down, increase it. Like this big old zipper pull that I have here, I don't really like them. So I'm not buying any more of them. I mean, it's just a personal preference. I don't, I don't really like these. They're nice and big to hold on to, but yeah, I don't like them. All right, I'm starting from the bottom, so I'm gonna start at my larger seam allowance. And this is the side the zipper is on, so I'm just gonna reach in there. Make sure it's out of the way. There we go. Okay, as you get to the top, just make sure you're going back to that out other seam allowance. Okay. And think she has you trim it, but I am. I'm actually going to use my pinking shears on this. Because uh, this, even with the interfacing, this cotton is really fraying. I don't like that. Probably one reason why I use mostly waterproof canvas so things don't fray and it just gets isn't that funny how over time your likes and your dislikes change and I'm gonna leave that top at the full seam allowance I'm just gonna leave that alone that way I can splay it open all right Oops, put that there for now. All right, so let's turn that right side out and see what we go at. has to be up and our zipper okay I gotta play with this a little because I don't uh, feels it feels upside down so let me play with it a little all right, so um, I did this off camera. I forgot to start uh, filming, but you got to put the top panels on as well. And when you put those on, the seam allowance is going down. If you can see that, so the seam allowance once you put this top panel on is going down, and then your handle connectors are going up. All right. So go slow because you got to make sure you keep your D-rings out of the way. And then I um, I had that my uh, 
crossbody connectors are on the seams as well. All right, so now we are just going to finish the lining and I'm gonna leave a pretty good opening, but I'll determine which side. I'm gonna leave the zipper side open actually. And this again is exactly like we did the outside, except we have a bigger seam allowance and we're gonna leave that zipper side open for turning the bag, birthing the bag, as they say. I'm still gonna go ahead and clip it. I may use uh, staples. I'm gonna see how it goes. I don't know that I'll have to, but I might. We'll see. Probably if I use enough, you know, uh, clips, I won't need to, but we'll see. And then you should have already clipped your centers on that bottom piece. And then the, the end centers are just the end seam. You know, and in the inside, if it if there are puckers a little bit on the inside, it's not nearly as a big of a deal as it is on the outside. This actually looks like it's doing pretty good. This is probably a little more challenging because it has the Decaville on it. I really don't think it's going to be too bad. Famous last words. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna staple it. I think I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, now I'm gonna mark <clears throat> where I want to leave the opening, just so I don't forget. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave it right here. All the way over to here. That's a huge opening. So that actually should be more than enough to turn the bag comfortably. I don't think I'll have an issue with this lining or the um, uh, vinyl that I used. We'll see. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> Make sure your zipper pocket is out of the way. All right, where did I have that? Here it is. Okay. So I'm gonna come to do that 90 degree angle. And remember, you got a bigger seam allowance here. And if you need to, put your hand inside to kind of, kind of guide it. I think I will. Keep things flat. No, no, you can't really see that, can you? Let me try and push that down. Yeah. 
don't need to staple this if you're using cotton quilting. It's it's going pretty smoothly. As long as you can put your hand in there and kind of guide it, it's, it's, it's doing pretty well. Beautiful. That was really that was really pretty easy. Good. No staples to take out either. I love it. Okay. Perfect. Now, I'm going to trim that with my um, pinking shear since it's cotton. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Siri. Go ahead. I don't know if you guys... If anybody out there has an iPhone 14 and the newest uh, version of the software, it seems so sensitive. The phones are very sensitive to touch. The Siri is very sensitive. I hardly ever use Siri. I should probably just turn her off. Really. I don't use it. I probably should. It's probably easier to use her than to do a search myself all right so there's and i just left my opening i did not trim the opening i will afterwards all right <clears throat> beautiful all right i'm gonna turn that right side out and just take a, a look let's see how we did a tiny little pucker right over here. That's it. I am good with that. There's no puckers anywhere else. It's so funny because the flamingo's legs look like I, there's a, I left a marking on the fabric, but it's the gray legs of the flamingo. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so let's put these two together. Okay, right sides together. And I'm gonna leave. Uh, I'm gonna leave the outside the way it is. In other words, wrong side out. And I'm gonna put this. So make sure you've got your zipper pocket on the lining matched with the. Um, you can do it any way you want, but matched with the slip pocket on the outside. So I'm gonna clip those together. And I believe, again, we have a pretty generous uh, top seam allowance. And so clip those matching your centers and matching your side seams. It's going to be a little thick if you did the... Um, crossbody connector on the side like I did but that's okay it'll be all right especially if you have an industrial machine if you don't I wouldn't do that I would put them down 
on the side, on the inside, so you don't have them in that top seam. All right, so clip that all the way along the top, and then sew around the top at that uh, designated seam allowance. I'm gonna fast forward that. Okay, that was uh, very easy to turn. I'll, I'll try and link this pink vinyl in the description because it just sews like butter. It It's not butter from Weft and Warp. I, I haven't tried that yet. I bet it's wonderful too. But I think this is from My Punk Embroidery and she's having a big sale on Friday, the March 3rd um, on her 18 inch rolls. I think it's usually, don't quote me, but it's usually 30% off her 18 inch rolls. And I believe that's what this is. So I'll, I'll try and link that because, man, I'm gonna have to get some more of it. It's very good. All right, I'm just gonna finish the bottom lining through my zipper pocket, and then I'll finish the zipper pocket. And then we will do a little top stitching. And we'll add our handles and our crossbody strap, and we'll be done. All right, so you've seen me do this a million times, so I'm gonna fast forward this. Okay, that really was not bad at all. I'm telling you, this vinyl is uh, is really nice. Okay, so a couple things to keep in mind. You saw me use a piece, an extra piece of vinyl. When you're going over really thick spots, whether you have your walking foot on or a narrow foot or anything like that, you're gonna wanna protect your vinyl. So I just went really slow here on each side and I protected the vinyl on both sides and then I, for the rest of it I just went slow I made sure my D rings or my uh, square rings were out of the way and that is that so now we are ready to put our handles on the other thing I wanted to mention was if you're going to use Wonder Clips on vinyl, it depends on the vinyl, but don't leave them on very long because they will mark and leave a permanent mark on your vinyl if you don't get them off pretty quickly. Okay, so I am going to put my handles on just like this on each side. Now, I am going to use I have this little tool. I'm trying to remember what I did with it. 
Hold on. Oh, here it is. This is uh, from Jolie Lee, Leslie at Jolie Lee Creations. It's really a nice little tool. Oh. Um, where you can mark for your rivets on your handle so that they're even. So again, you've got an A, B, and C hole. And I'm gonna use, you line it up with the end and I'm gonna use the B and the C hole on both sides. And both handles. You can pre-clip or pre-make your holes. And there's always a good side and a not so great side to your handles. So that's what I was doing. I was trying to find, okay, which is the nicer side? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's just a great little tool. I mean, uh, I use it whenever I can. So I've just marked both all, let's see, four holes on each handle. And you're gonna have to have 10 millimeter rivets. You would for this vinyl because it's fairly thick and we're going through uh, eight layers of vinyl. Oh, I don't know if you can hear the trash man, he's here. You know, that's one thing that was weird when we moved to Florida. It's been 10 years ago now, but um, they have trash pickup twice a week. In Kansas, where we lived, it was once a week. It's fantastic. I love it. No, I'm sure we pay for it in our taxes and all that, but. Okay, let me get a bit of that. All right, now let me grab some silver rivets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, how many do I need? And then we're just gonna put them on. Uh, let me see which was the good side. This one actually doesn't have a bad side. But you want it to be like this. So you want the, the raw edge on the inside. And then these are just, they're, just, they're um, oh, I gotta move this or I'm gonna dump them all over the floor. Um, they're even on every part of the handle. I maybe should have used a bigger hole. I hate using very big holes because uh, I don't want my rivets coming out. Oh, man. I might have to go back. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Sheesh. There we go. All right. Same thing over here. Just make sure you're not twisted. So there's my handle and I'm pulling it. And so the raw end is on the inside of my handle. Yeah, man, I should have made bigger holes. That's... Let me just do that. I'll just make one bigger hole here. Much easier. I mean, goodness gracious. Sometimes bag making, you struggle when you don't need to. Honestly, with my other handle. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that over. Uh, which is the bad side? This is the bad side, all right. I'm gonna put that in, put my rivet in.
All right, I'm not gonna struggle with this. I'm not doing it. So I'm gonna make a little bigger hole here. On both of these. All right, let's see if that helps me. Might help if I come use this one first. Oh, heavens, that's significantly better. Let's see. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Make sure you're not um, twisting it. Oh, that made all the difference. Just a slightly bigger hole. Okay. Let me get these out of here before I knock them on the floor. Okay. So I'm going to go press those, and then we already have our handle done, and we'll be done. I'll be right back. Okay, I pressed my handles. And now I um, I kind of angled my zipper here because I have small zipper ends. And again, you do not have to have one of these zipper ends by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I've got to make it pretty small to get in there. So this is my zipper end. It's pretty small. Okay. And then I have my tiniest little screw. Oh, sometimes this stuff is so small. Gosh, that worked beautifully. I'm just gonna manually do it really tight. There we go. Isn't that cool? I just love that line. A little screwdriver. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna tuck that down in there. And there's the bag with the crossbody strap. All right, there's my two handles. And I like having the D-rings because if I want those handles out of the way they just flop down and there's your two zippers with your two zipper pockets beautiful lots and lots of room you've got your back with your huge slip pocket and then you've got your top zipper you just open that up and you've got huge area inside and this is the this is the small apothecary and then you've got a zipper pocket it's beautiful there you go apothecary small by sincerely jen patterns isn't that just so pretty? I just love it. And there's the bottom. We did really good on the bottom. Part of it is this vinyl and using staples. But isn't that cute with the little flamingos? You can't see my little parrots. You can see them on the inside. I maybe should have done this part, the parrots too. That would have been really cute. But my zippers are cute too. And my little seahorse. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to click JD down in the bottom right corner. That's for Genie Designs and subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks, bye-bye.